Hi, welcome to Harvard Applied Math 205, a graduate course in scientific computing and numerical methods. In this video, we're going to introduce the Rayleigh quotient that we can use to accurately approximate the eigenvalues of a matrix. We'll look at the definition of the Rayleigh quotient, look at some of its properties, and then show how it can be used as part of a numerical technique to efficiently calculate eigenvalues and eigenvectors. For this video and the next, we're going to look at the special case when our n by n matrix A is real and symmetric. And much of this material can be generalized to the complex non-hermitian case, but we're going to stick with real and symmetric matrices because it makes some of the analysis simpler. So for a n-dimensional vector x, we're going to define the Rayleigh quotient R of x to be equal to x transpose Ax divided by x transpose x. And why is this a useful definition for eigenvalue analysis? Well, let's suppose now that lambda and v are an eigenpair of A. We see then that R of v is equal to v transpose AV divided by v transpose v. And AV is just equal to lambda v. So this expression will simplify to lambda v transpose v divided by v transpose v. And that will just give us lambda. So we see that for any eigenvector of our matrix A, the Rayleigh quotient will give us the corresponding eigenvalue. Let's now look at a theorem. For our symmetric matrix A, we can say that for any vector x, we will have that R of x has to be between the range of lambda 1 and lambda n, where lambda 1 is the smallest eigenvalue of A, and lambda n is the largest eigenvalue of A. And to prove this, we'll make use of the fact that our matrix A will have a full set of orthogonal eigenvectors that will form a basis. And therefore, for any vector x, we can express it in terms of that basis. We can write that it's equal to the sum from j equal 1 to n of alpha j times vj, for some coefficients alpha j. And if we now look at r of x, which is equal to x transpose ax divided by x transpose x, we can make use of the orthogonality of the vectors vj to write this as the sum from j equal 1 to n of lambda j alpha j squared divided by the sum from j equal 1 to n of alpha j squared. And we can now get an inequality by replacing all of the lambda j with lambda 1. And since lambda 1 is the smallest eigenvalue, we therefore know that this expression has to be greater than or equal to lambda 1 times the sum from j equal 1 to n of alpha j squared divided by the sum from j equal 1 to n of alpha j squared. And that will simplify to lambda 1. So we'll therefore have that r of x has to be greater than or equal to lambda 1. Similarly, we could replace the lambda j with the upper bound of lambda n and establish the other bound that r of x is less than or equal to lambda n. Let's look at a corollary of this result. So if we have a symmetric matrix A and it's positive definite, that will be if and only if all of its eigenvalues are positive. So let's look at this one way to begin with. So suppose we have a symmetric positive definite matrix A, that we often abbreviate to SPD. Then for any non-zero vector x, uh, we have that x transpose Ax is greater than zero. That's our SPD definition. And if we now look at lambda 1, we know that that's equal to R of V1. And that's going to be equal by definition to V1 transpose A V1 divided by V1 transpose V1. And we know the numerator has to be greater than zero by definition. And we also know the denominator has to be greater than zero for a non-zero vector. So therefore, we see that lambda 1 has to be greater than zero. And therefore, all of the eigenvalues have to be positive. So let's look at this result the other way now. So suppose now that A has positive eigenvalues. Then Let's look now at any non-zero vector x. So we then have that x transpose ax is equal to r of x times x transpose x from our Rayleigh quotient definition. 
And we know then that r of x has to be greater than or equal to lambda 1. And we know that x transpose x is just the Euclidean norm squared of x. And so therefore we see that this expression has to be greater than or equal to lambda 1 times this Euclidean norm squared. And that has to be greater than 0. So we've established this result both ways. A very useful property of the Rayleigh quotient is that if we have an approximate eigenvector x to our matrix A, then R of x will give us a good approximation to the eigenvalue. And the way that we can see this is that the estimation of an eigenvalue from an approximate eigenvector can be thought of as a n by 1 linear least squares problem. So we could look at solving the linear least squares problem of x times lambda is approximately equal to a times x. And here then, x would be our tall, thin matrix uh, that we introduced in previous sections on linear least squares, and ax would be our right-hand side. And to solve this linear least squares problem, we could write down the normal equations, and that would just be x transpose x lambda is equal to x transpose ax, and if we rewrite this, we'll see that our approximation lambda will be given by the real equation of x. So how accurate is the real equation approximation to an eigenvalue? And to look at this, we'll look at r as a function from vectors to scalars, and we can look at partial derivatives of r with respect to the different components. So if we look at dr by dxj, then we can use the quotient rule for differentiation. We'll have two terms. The first is d by dxj of x transpose ax, all divided by x transpose x. And the second term will be minus x transpose ax times d by dxj of x transpose x, divided by x transpose x, all squared. And after some rearrangement, we find that that will be equal to 2 divided by x transpose x times the jth component of ax minus r of x times x. And therefore, we can write down an expression for the gradient of r that will be equal to 2 divided by x transpose x times ax minus r of x x. Now, suppose we evaluate this for an eigenpair, lambda and v, and we know that r of v will be equal to lambda. And if we look then at the gradient of r at v, that will be equal to 2 divided by v transpose v times av minus lambda v, and that will just evaluate to 0. So that shows us then that the eigenvectors of A are the stationary points of R. So this is a useful result. And suppose now that we look at our eigenpair lambda and v. And let's suppose that we look at a Taylor series of R of x about v. So we'll have then the R of x is equal to R of v plus the gradient of our evaluated v transpose times x minus v, plus a half times x minus v transpose times the Hessian of r evaluated v times x minus v, plus higher order terms. And we know then the gradient term in this expression will vanish. So we'll therefore have this evaluates to r of v plus a half times x minus v transpose times the Hessian of r, times x minus v plus higher order terms. Therefore we see that as x tends to v, the Rayleigh quotient approximation will give us that the magnitude of r of x minus lambda is going to scale like the Euclidean distance squared between x and v. And this is a really useful result that we can exploit numerically. We see that the Rayleigh quotient approximation to an eigenvalue 
squares the error in the corresponding eigenvector approximation. So we'll now look at a Python program that can exploit this fact and combine it with a inverse iteration with a shift in order to achieve very rapid convergence for calculating eigenvalues. We'll now look at the program RaleighI2.py that implements the Rayleigh quotient iteration. And here we build on the inverse iteration that we previously looked at, but we incorporate the Rayleigh quotient to accelerate the convergence. And we're going to use the test matrix A with components 5, 1, 1, 1, 6, 1, and 1, 1, 7. And this matrix has three distinct eigenvalues, lambda 1 equal to 4.325, lambda 2 equal to 5.461, and lambda 3 equal to 8.214. In the program, we first define our matrix A, and we then define the starting vector that we'll use in the iteration. We'll choose all the components to be the same, and we'll divide by the square root of 3 to get a normalized vector. We'll then compute a reference solution for the eigenvalues using the numpy.linalg.eig routine. And it happens that for this particular choice of our starting vector, the solution that we're going to converge to is given by the zeroth entry of the V array. And so we'll store this and we'll use that to evaluate the error during the Rayleigh quotient iteration. We're now going to perform the Rayleigh quotient iteration and we're going to run the iteration until the relative eigenvalue change falls below a tolerance. And so we'll first set dummy values for this relative change and for the previous eigenvalue estimate. And we'll then run the iteration until that relative change falls below 10 to the minus 10. We'll store our previous eigenvalue estimate and we'll then create a new estimate for the eigenvalue using the Rayleigh quotient. We'll then perform an inverse iteration and we'll shift by the amount given by our eigenvalue estimate. And in this case then we should end up with a very good estimate for the eigenvector corresponding to this eigenvalue estimate. We'll then normalize the resulting vector and that will give us our new vector x. We'll then print the iteration number and also the error in the eigenvalue compared to the reference solution. We'll then compute the relative change in the eigenvalue estimate and then we will terminate the iteration once that falls below 10 to the minus 10. And finally, we'll print out the three eigenvalues from our reference calculation and the one that we calculated from the Rayleigh iteration. So let me now go ahead and run this program. And so we can see that we have very rapid convergence to a solution. Even after four iterations here, we have reached numerical precision. And we can see that each iteration, the errors are going down uh, dramatically. And so this really gives us a major improvement in finding eigenvalues when compared to the previous power iteration and inverse iteration examples. And as expected, we find the value of 8.214 that corresponds to the zeroth entry in our reference calculation, uh, v, v0.